If you want to publish research papers in high impact Scopus Index journals, the number one thing that you really need is a really good research aim or question or hypothesis. Because no matter how well you structure your research paper, no matter you know how good your language is, if you don't have a high impact research aim or question, your paper will just never be accepted in those top, top journals. So in this video, I really want to show you what constitutes that high impact research aim or question or hypothesis. And I'm going to show you the five elements that you need to get right in order to have a name that makes your study publishable in those top, top journals. So let's dive right in and let's see how it works. So if you're new here, my name is Marek Kiczkowek and I run Academic English Now, where we help PhD students and researchers publish papers in top Scopus Index journals. So how do you create a high impact research aim that allows you to publish your research ideas in those really, really good journals? Because again, no matter how well you structure it, no matter how much money you pay for proofreading, if you don't have a really good aim, well, you, you want to have really good results and your paper will just not be worth publishing in a really good journal. And after working with over 460 PhD students and researchers using my own experience as well of having published papers in, in very good journals in my own field teaching English and also analyzing hundreds of published papers in top journals, um, I've boiled it down to five elements that you need to get right in order to have a high impact research aim. So what are these five elements? I'll start with, you know, with the most obvious, which is the novelty. Okay. Um, so your research aim or hypothesis or question needs to be novel. And, you know, this is the most fundamental element. And, you know, whether that's right or wrong, most reviewers in journals, they're looking just for novel research. Um, it does create problems in academia where there is a crisis of replicability. And basically, you know, nobody wants to publish studies that replicate results, which is a shame because, you know, we do need to replicate the results to really see if they actually work in different populations and, and so on. But that's, that's a topic for another video. So you need to make the research aim novel. How do you make it novel? Well, you need to find a research gap. And I have another video on this channel where I talk specifically about um, the four types of research gaps and how to find them. But in here, I'll just outline it really quickly. So um, there are basically four types of a research gap, which will make your research aim novel. Number one, there can be a lack or insufficient um, studies on a specific topic um, in a specific geographical area um, you know using a specific methodology maybe so there's lack or insufficient studies there can also be problems with previous studies or limitations of previous studies and there can also be a practical problem that needs resolving and hasn't been resolved um, yet and number number four there can also be inconsistent results okay so a lot of studies have been conducted but basically the results are conflicting or inconsistent and that's where your study comes in okay so that's how you can make your research aim novel by having the research gap um, but just that doesn't necessarily mean that your study is worth researching. There are lots of novel things in, in the world. Like, you know, there can be a novel ice cream type um, in the cafeteria next door, but that doesn't mean you should research that ice cream type, if you see what I mean, right? So the second element of a high impact um, research aim is that it's worth researching, that this research aim is actually important. And there are basically three types of, of, of importance. Something, a topic can be important for society in general. So that's, that's true of topics like I don't know, like cancer research, you know, something that really impacts the society or the world in general. That might, might not be the case um, for your topic, but you should not despair because, you know, the second type of importance is importance for your discipline. So the topic might not be important for the world in general, but maybe more and more researchers are paying attention to it and it's really important for your discipline. And then the third type is an important problem that needs resolving, either an academic problem in your discipline that hasn't been resolved and is very important, or a more sort of, you know, problem um, that society or the world 
faces, okay? So apart from the fact that you make your topic novel, you also need to make the topic actually worth researching. Otherwise, it's not going to be published in a really, really good journal. Okay, and there are three more elements of a high impact aim. And before I dive deeper into those, if you're enjoying this video and would like to work with me and my team on a more personal level to help you publish papers in Q1 Scopus Index journals, then book a free one to one consultation. The link is right below this video. We're going to sit down for an hour with you, analyze what your challenges are, analyze what your goals are and come up with a personalized plan that will help you to achieve those goals faster. So if you want to book that one to one consultation and work with us, then the link to do that is right below this video. So coming back to element number three of a high impact um, aim is that it's got to be specific. So you've got to focus on a relatively narrow area. I mean, not too narrow, that doesn't give you really any results, but it also cannot be very broad. It's, it's got to be specific um, enough. And I want to give you an example um, in here, right? Um, so think of an aim such as, you know, this study aims to investigate to what extent online courses can improve the coherence of PhD students thesis in Singapore. OK, now this is this is very, very broad because, you know, we've got the study area coherence. But what type of coherence? I mean, this is this is really broad. And um, we've got population, PhD students, but PhD students in which field? Are you going to study all PhD students in Singapore? Well, obviously not, right? So it could be, you could limit it by field. Um, you could limit it by, you know, uh, the year of PhD students, university and so on, right? And there is also, you know, we're going to look at whether online courses can improve coherence of uh, PhD thesis. But what type of online courses? I mean, there's a million and one online courses that could or could not do it. So that's how you could make it more specific, right? Either specify the study area, the population or the intervention that you're looking at. OK, so that's um, element number three. You've got to make it specific. And then it's got to also your high impact aim has to be researchable and measurable. And this is very much connected to specificity, because if something is too broad, you will not be able to capture that. So if we come back to our um, initial aim of trying to, to see if online courses can improve PhD students um, thesis coherence, OK, coherence is not really measurable or re researchable because it's such a broad topic. I mean, how are you going to what type of coherence are you going to measure? And how are you going to measure it? OK, so it's got to be researchable and measurable. And also, you know, the word improve. Can it improve coherence? Like improve how? In what way? OK, and in here, I just want to, you know, also highlight that this researchable and measurable feature doesn't just apply to quantitative studies with numbers. It also applies to qualitative ones because, you know, if you're doing interviews with people or observations, you, you've got to be able to measure something and capture a phenomenon, whether you capture it qualitatively in words or you capture it quantitatively in numbers. It doesn't matter, but it has to be researchable and measurable. OK, and then finally, um, the last element of a high impact research aim, it's got to make theoretical or practical contributions okay what sort of contributions it makes kind of depends on the on the topic that you've chosen it depends a little bit on your field but nevertheless you know your study is expected to make theoretical or practical contributions so when you're designing the aim of your study well ask yourself how can it help advance the field that's basically the theoretical contribution it's you know it's how you kind of push the field forward so you might be able to create a completely new theory okay you might be able to adapt an existing theory you might be able to challenge an existing theory and show why it's limited okay and that's how you're advancing your field and moving it forward now your study can also have practical contributions, right? So think about different groups of people in your in your field and how your research might benefit them. So, for example, if we come back to this um, aim with improving PhD students coherence, 
um, in the thesis, right? Well, this could, you know, there, there would be practical contributions for PhD students, uh, for supervisors, for university uh, departments, right? Um, for, for researchers, for lecturers, there, there could be several groups of stakeholders that could benefit from this research. And before you kind of um, start on a, on a study, it's really important to think about those potential contributions because you need to be clear that there are some potential contributions that, that you're making because if there, there aren't the chances of your paper being published are much much lower so these are the, the five elements that you need to get right in order to have a high impact aim that increases your chances of your paper being published in a really really good journal now if you've enjoyed this video and you want to work further with me or my team then book a free one-to-one -one consultation the link is right below we're going to sit one-to-one -one with you analyze what your current challenges are what your goals are and come up together with a plan that allows you to become a published researcher much much faster and the link to book that free one-to-one -one consultation is below this video